Hello everyone, my name is Sam Cantori and I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar, Vulcan 10.1 Drafting Sheet Enhancements. Your host today is Anne McCall. Anne is a mining engineer with our technical services group and provides consulting and training services to the North American region. A few things before we get started. First, today's webinar will conclude with a question and answer session, so please feel free to write questions in the panel on the right hand side of your screen. Also, you will receive a link to this recording of this webinar by email in case you'd like to see it again. It will also be available on the MapTech website at a later date. I'll now hand it over to Anne. Thank you, Sam. Hi guys, I'm Anne. I'm going to be giving this webinar today. I'm a mining engineer here at MapTech and I'm very excited to show you the new drafting sheet functionality that we've included in Vulkan 10.1. 10.1 is available right now for download on the users area, so go ahead and, and update uh, since we have a lot of new features in there for you. So what I'm going to cover today is this new drafting functionality, and that includes these new features here. So we've included this new drafting page size editor. I'm going to show you what that looks like also the drafting sheet editor, and that's kind of the main thing, and then also this new title block database. So there's kind of three components, and then there's a lot within these that I'll be showing you. And I'm going to kind of approach this from the standpoint of maybe you've had a little bit of experience with creating a drafting sheet in Vulkan before, and you maybe know some of the pain points and some of what makes it difficult. Things like the naming conventions for certain plot elements, things like that. I'm going to show you how the drafting sheet editor makes a lot of this uh, very nice, very smooth. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and begin our live demo portion so you guys can see this new functionality. And pretty much just by me walking through it, you'll get an idea of how to use this. So it's pretty much like training at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and start with that. So here we are in Vulkan. And I'm going to show you the drafting page size editor here first. All the new functionality is here in the file drafting sheets menu. And the old functionality is still here as well in case you do want to use the old ways. Uh, we have not removed those. They're all still right here. But the new functionality are these two things here. The drafting page size editor is this first one I'm going to show you. And this is based just kind of like a library of the different page sizes that you might want to include uh, that you might plot with. So you can see over here on the left we have the metric paper sizes and the widths and heights are given in centimeters. And now we also include imperial paper sizes with the widths and heights given in inches. So some of you who are familiar with plotting before, uh, you might have been creating drafting sheets or trying to create these imperial drafting sheets. And before it was difficult because there wasn't a lot of support for the imperial sizes. It was very much centered around metric page sizes, which is great if you're from Australia or, or somewhere outside the US and Canada. But typically here in North America, if you're dealing with imperial page sizes, then it was a little more tricky. So here we've got all the standard ones listed. You can also add any of your own. So if you've got a custom plot size that you want your plotter to be able to print, you can come in and add it in here and then you can use it in the new drafting sheet editor. So that's what this looks like. Just wanted to show you guys that. I'm just going to see OK and that'll close that panel for me. So now we're going to build a new drafting sheet with the drafting sheet editor. So I'm going to start off here in File, Drafting Sheets. Drafting Sheet Editor. So the first thing it's going to prompt us for is to choose our drafting sheet units. Since inches is kind of newer functionality here, I'm going to go ahead and work in inches. And you have the option to either load an existing drafting sheet from your drafting sheet database, or you can create a new sheet, which is what we'll be doing today. I'm just going to give this a generic name of demo. You can also give the drafting sheet a description if you want to uh, be a little more wordy about what this might be used for. So we say OK, and then this is going to go ahead and launch our drafting sheet editor. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of try to give myself a little more screen real estate to work with here today. Uh, this works really nicely if you have two monitors and you can kind of have your, your drafting sheet on one and then have this panel for the editor on the other. 
this is the area where, where we're working here. You can see uh, right now it's defaulting to an A0 sized paper, uh, which is a metric paper size. So uh, we are going to pick an imperial paper size. I'm going to set up an 11 by 17. That's a pretty common one I see a lot. And so tabloid size is 11 by 17. You can see as you pick that, the page size, you can see how it just updates right there on the screen for you. So it's very dynamic. Right now I have it in the portrait orientation. I'm going to switch this to landscape. Uh, you'll notice there's also one other option here, which is user-defined. And if you choose this user-defined option, rather than picking a predefined paper size, you can use this digitize button right here, and you can actually just draw your own, however big you want it, uh, just kind of eyeballing it, as opposed to setting up one previously in the drafting page size editor. But for now, I'm going to stick with my tabloid size. You can also add in a margin, so if I want to say I want a half inch margin, I put in 0.5 in the box, click somewhere else in the panel, and you can see that will automatically update there. And then you can pick a different border, I can make the border thicker, I can do dashed lines, things like that. So the line styles here are greatly improved. Previously to make your margins thicker, uh, Vulcan kind of cheated and it would actually just draw a lot of lines side by side. It didn't use the standard uh, line style editor here. So this is really nice new functionality to have as well. So that sets up my external box. I now need to create my internal box, which is where the data would plot. So I'm going to use this append option, and there's kind of two different ways we can do this. There's this mode, there's single and multiple. So I'm going to show you single real quick. Basically with the single option, you can just come in here and digitize your box. And then when you right click, here's my internal view and it automatically puts a nice little scale bar and a North arrow on the plot for me. If I don't want those things over here in the grid, I can uncheck them and then they can go away. So you can see you just uncheck and then you don't need to have those if you don't want them. So that's how you do just like a single view. You can also keep adding new ones here if you wanted to have multiple views that way. That's perfectly fine. But I'm going to show you also the multiple mode. So first of all, I'm going to delete this one. You delete things by highlighting the row in the grid, and you see it actually highlights that object on the screen, and then press the delete button here. So now I'm going to switch this to multiple, and you'll see what happens now when I go and try to create this this box here. So I'm going to put in how many views I want. I'm going to say I want two views, maybe for a plan and a section view. And I want these views spaced across two rows. So two rows, two views. And then spacing, um, I'm not going to really do any spacing here. I'm going to stick zero in for that. So I say OK, and there we go. It dynamically creates those two views for me. Each of them has a north arrow and a scale bar, so maybe that's a little overkill. You might want to uncheck on one of them or something. And then you can actually move the north arrow and scale bars around. So here on the scale bar pane right here, uh, I've unchecked that one, so you can see that one's actually unavailable to me. But this one, I could use this, and I can just go and drag it over here if I want, or maybe I want to move it down to kind of this title lock area, whatever you want to do. Uh, it's very flexible that way. You can also change the scale bar style. So right now, here's a pretty standard one. Um, we also have this and that, so some new styles for you guys as well. Same kind of thing with the north arrow. So on the north arrow, if I select the row, and then I can change the style. So here's kind of that first style. So there's some different styles that you can use for that. So pretty neat. You can also change the color, things like that. Uh, you'll notice that everything's in white, which is very nice as opposed to the standard Vulcan green. You don't have to go and change your lines and everything after the fact. It's going to create everything in white. And Vulcan is smart enough to know that if this is white, it's going to plot it out in black. So here we have the north arrows. So I'm going to move on now to the title block portion. And this title block portion helps you to easily get nice straight lines for kind of a title block you might want to put at the bottom of your page or really wherever you want on the page. So I'm going to create a design grid and that's going to be kind of the basis of my title block here. And I'm going to tell it how many rows I want. So let's say now let's look at like five rows. There we go, five rows. How many columns do I want? Eh, maybe like four, you know, maybe three. 
you can see it's really dynamic and it just kind of updates for you without much effort. Now right now everything's kind of equally spaced here and that's this equal sizes checkbox. If I turn that off, I can then edit these grids for the proportion. So let's say perhaps maybe that first row, I don't want that to be quite as uh, wide. I'm going to go ahead and maybe say make that half size. So you can see it's proportional to this. This is half the size of these other two at this point. And then maybe the top row I want to maybe increase a little bit because that's where the title goes or something. So I can easily do that and kind of set up a nice little thing for that. So then I say OK and that saves my changes. And then I can actually save this title block off and once you fill it out more it's really when it would be more appropriate to save it. So I'll try to come back to that as well. You also have all these options here for like the text and everything so you can come in and make any modifications here. This is kind of to set it up uh, before you create anything and then as you create things you can always modify them as well. So I'm going to go into design line and that's where all these lines I've created through this title block option have been placed. So let's say I kind of want to clear out maybe part of this title block, leave a space for like my logo or something. I'm going to use this select line function and I'm going to come in here and pick the lines I want to remove. I'm also going to get rid of this guy right here. And then you see it selects those for me and I'm going to now delete them. So now we've got a nice little space to work with. I'm going to add some permanent text to my drafting sheet and this is the text that is always going to kind of remain how it is. Later we'll add the text field where users will be able to input their user inputs when they go to plot. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of digitize this, this new text object here. Uh, let's say this is going to be the drawn by field and I'm going to say OK. And right now you can see it's giant. So let's fix that. We can retroactively edit this. So I'm going to go ahead and say like 0.5 looks a little bit better. Let's try 0.2. That looks pretty nice. I can also change the font. So my favorite font to use is Arial. It's a nice clean font there. So that's good. And then up here, I'm going to, now that I kind of have something alike, I'm going to go ahead and set this to match. And this stuff up here says that anything new I create will follow this same format. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add a couple more fields here, and I you know, have one for the date, have one for maybe the scale, and maybe like the drawing number or something like that. Just kind of generic title block fields. So you can see right now things aren't very well aligned. Well, we've added this nice little alignment tool that allows you to align any kind of objects you want, which is nice because before you kind of had to eyeball it or snap to the grid and things like that. And it was a little tricky sometimes. So I'm going to go ahead and left align all these things. So I'm going to do a little bit of an offset here. I'm going to do point 0.2 for my offset. I'm going to say align. And then I'm going to pick this left side here where I want to align. And then I pick the objects to align. And you can see as I pick these, they all kind of snap into alignment. So that looks good. Now I'm going to make sure they're also vertically aligned in their cells. So there's a vertical center option here as well. For this, each little row has to be aligned individually because each cell is a different object. So you can see that I can go through here and now everything is nicely centered in its cell. I'm going to also tell it to include this stuff with the title block, and so when I go to save the title block, it will remember all of this text, and I can use that title block then on other drafting sheets. For my text field, I'm going to go ahead and add a couple here. Let me go ahead and, again, update my fonts so that they're not so large when I create this text. And characters will go with, like, let's allow users yeah, maybe 15 to start with, and then I'll show you guys how you can modify that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and put some text fields in here. We can align them here in a second. Do my left alignment. That looks good. I'm not going to worry right now about the, the vertical alignment too much. Uh, but you can see, like, right now this is allowing me 15 characters. These X's are just the character placeholders. Maybe 15 isn't enough. I want to fill this thing out. So maybe let's say, let's try like 30. So if I put 30 in there, you can see it automatically updates that so I can see if it's going to fit inside my box. 
looks good so far. The other thing you can do with this is you can use this dynamic resize, which is really neat because you basically click on that and then as you move your mouse, if you make the text bigger, you get fewer characters. If you make it smaller, you're going to get more characters. So you can dynamically resize it to fit. And then once you kind of get an idea of how this is going to look, you can kind of come in here and copy paste uh, from, from the different cells. So I'm actually going to leave that one as point two just to make it nice and maybe I'll see if 35 characters will fit. That looks pretty good. I'm also going to include all of these with my title block as well. Plot elements, this is just kind of the, the generic plotting things. Uh, they've all kind of, the miscellaneous things have ended up here. So if I say create plot element, this is what I would use for creating like a clipping box if I didn't want data to plot in like this box in the view, things like that. So here's the clipping box. You can have it just be an ordinary rectangle. You can do plotting notes or dynamic title block if you're using batch plotting. And then if you're doing underground ring design, you have the explosives and drilling reports as well. So that's what that option is for. I'm not going to actually keep that. So there's that. You can also add legends. So you can do a static legend or a dynamic legend. Static legend would let you pick one from your SCD file and actually put it here on the drafting sheet. Uh, if you do it that way, then you're going to have to make any modifications if that legend changes. The dynamic legend is used in batch plotting, so that one will update dynamically uh, if your legend will update at any point. And then, of course, the piece you have all been waiting for, we have finally included the ability to put an image directly on a drafting sheet. So for those of you before who have tried to get logos on your drafting sheets, you've maybe found it's hard. You have to convert an image to a DXF, bring it into Vulkan, clean up the lines, fill it in, get all the colors. Right. It can be very time consuming. Uh, but now it's very simple. We're going to just import an image here. So I'm going to go ahead and browse. Let's find a picture to use here. Use a nice MapTech logo. And then I'm going to just draw that image right on here. You can see it's going to maintain the aspect ratio of the image so I don't get any distortion. And if you don't want to maintain that aspect ratio for whatever reason, you can uncheck that option there and then you can dynamically resize that as well. So there we go. Nice logo. So that pretty well covers it for setting up the drafting sheet. Real quick, I'm just going to align these guys so they look a little bit nicer. But you can see I've laid out a nice professional looking drafting sheet in just a matter of minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and save this and I'll show you guys a little bit about the inner workings of this. You can see it's saving to my Vulcan resources area, so that's good. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is also save my title block. I think I've included my text and everything. I'm going to put my image on the title block too. So here, back in the title block, you can say save title block. And then you can actually see I already have some saved. And these are going to be included in Vulkan 10.1, these default ones. I'm going to go ahead and add this demo one. And make sure I save again and close. So then. Uh, what I have basically is my drafting sheet and I'm going to open up my property editor again so you guys can kind of see how the naming convention has been put in for us. So before if you're doing drafting sheets a lot of times you would have to go if you're doing a multi view you would have to put in this MV1 and MV2 you'd have to manually go and put that in instead of just internal. Now it does it all for you so you don't have to remember the weird conventions or anything like that. All the different aspects here like for my text fields that's all been included so this is node 1, node 2, node 3, node 4 so those all have to be uniquely named and if you have done this before and you maybe had one that was named the same thing then it causes problems so this now you don't have to worry about that at all and uh, yeah it makes it very convenient for, for a lot of those things. Okay so I'm going to show you real quick if you did want to bring in a title block uh, I'm going to just do it here on the same drafting sheet. Basically, you load up a drafting sheet or you create a new one, and then when you come to title block, you can say, I want to import a title block. And I'll show you um, a different one than the one I saved, so you can kind of see something a little different. So you basically pick it, and then you place where you want it on your drafting sheet. So then here's a, a different style of title block you could use. 
So that's how simple it is. And you can transfer your title box between different page sizes and all of that, and then just do a little bit of scaling with the text and the, the boxes to make it all fit. So there you have it. That's my nice drafting sheet. As far as the title block database goes, uh, you can see here in my resource databases, this is now drafting title DGD. That's where the title blocks are stored. And then here's my classic drafting database where the drafting sheets are stored. So I hope you've learned a lot about our new drafting sheet editor. And I hope you're excited about this new functionality. It should greatly improve the need for uh, creating drafting sheets in a nice, quick, easy way. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. And I'll turn it over now for any questions you may have. Thanks, Anne. As I mentioned before, please write in any questions through the panel on the right-hand side of your screen. Let's see if we have any so far. Will drafting sheets created with the new editor be compatible with the previous versions of Vulkan 9.1? For the most part, yes, they will be compatible. Um, things that won't be compatible are going to be like the logo, since that's brand new functionality. If you're bringing in an image, that part's not going to be compatible. But other than that, all the, the naming and everything has not changed at all. So um, for the most part, you should be able to use your drafting sheets created in 10 with, um, you know, with 9 or Vulcan 10.0. So hopefully, hopefully that'll go well. Great, and we have one more question. Can drafting sheets be used in batch plotting and plot all wizard? Yes, and that's actually something that's really nice uh, because previously there was a different naming convention. I'll show you guys here. Um, this M view, and then you know for the different view you have to put in a number. That was a plot all wizard thing only. And before you had to, if you were doing batch plotting, it was BP underscore view underscore one and BP underscore view underscore two, things like that. Um, now this M view naming convention is compatible with both batch plotting and plot all wizard. So that's another nice feature. You don't have to worry about switching between the naming conventions or having a different set of drafting sheets for batch plotting. Everything is going to work with both. So. Uh, that's another huge, huge thing about functionality and just having everything be kind of compatible. And our last question that we have time for, um, can I modify the page size after the drafting sheet has been created? Yes, you absolutely can. Uh, basically what you would do is you'd load up the drafting sheet and then you can come back into the drafting sheet editor. And here and then I could change and say like if I want to go instead of from an ANSI B to an ANSI C size, uh, it's going to just update that for me. And then I can come in here and then just fix, you know, I can resize those views and make them fit to that if I want. And I can do a save as in order to save that off as a new drafting sheet or just overwrite the previous one. So you can pretty easily and pretty dynamically change that page size if you find yourself needing to. Thanks, Anne. If you have any additional questions, feel free to contact Anne directly or email support at maptech.com. We're nearing the end of our time today. On behalf of the entire MapTech team, thank you for attending. We hold a different webinar each month, so please visit maptech.com to view the entire schedule. Thank you and have a great day.